you're being, you're being, you're being programmed. Let's start with the basics. His name is derived from the same root as the Latin word janua, means a gate or an opening. He is also known as Ianos Pater, which means Janos Father. Janos, like his head, has many. In two-headed form, his name is Ionus Bifrons. Means two. In four-headed form, he is known as Ionus Quadrifrons, four-faced, forehead. Near the spot of where Rome was founded, is Janos's arch. It represents his four-headed form. In three-headed form, he is known as the Trinity. So now it gets you thinking, doesn't it, when you see all these medieval posters, images that you see, it's all Janos with three heads. <laughs> I can't get any more plainer than that, guys. Here's a coin with two, but also three-headed form. And I just want to include a few medieval images so you can see. So when you see this image, people go, oh no, it's a trinity, it's a trinity, it is. It's of Janos. It's a crazy world that we live in, but I've been showing this for years. On the left is the 19th century version of Baphomet, made by Elias Levi. Now they want you to think it's that, when in fact the Knights Templar worshipped the three-headed form of Janos as Baphomet. Crazy world, but I've been showing you that for years. Janos is known as Deorum Deus, means God of Gods. That's how significant he is. That's why they worship him so highly. Janos is at the beginning of human life as concivious. So when your parents are conceiving you, he is there at that moment and at birth. Obelisks are phallus worship to concivious, which is Janos. It's that simple, guys. The ritual of circumcision is to reveal the Janos aspect. You cut the tip, you cut the head, you reveal, and this is what is revealed. It's been in our faces forever, and it blew me away when I found this. You can just see it is the head of the penis in Janus aspect, and that is why they cut the foreskin off. The month of January is named after him, it's called Januarius or Ianorius, if you use the I. January was originally the 11th month. That's why that number is significant. And they moved it to become the first. Janos' number is 11 and 65, which equates to 11 and 300. He is the calendar. So pretty significant. And as you can see from this old image, he holds 365 in his hand.
the temple of Janos was officially the threshold and he's a threshold god as well of the Roman Empire so they chose that to be the threshold that's how again how significant he is to them the temple doors were only open in times of war and they closed them in times of peace bit ironic isn't it and they were only closed three times the first time was in 29 BC which again adds to 11 and the date the 29th of January his month and his number <laughs> crazy both add to 11 and here you go this is where I got the you know the information from Janos was the head of the 12 gods his statue had 12 altars under his feet symbolizing the 12 houses of the zodiac yeah he's that important and big The Italian word Lazio descends from the Latin word Latium. That's where he was the first king. Janos is also the janitor he controlled the doors the portals as he has the keys so each key on his chain represents another god not just a log another god and another name the entity goes by that's an intriguing thing isn't it so the first king of Sumeria was also the first god of Sumeria. He was a deified king named Ia, and he is known as the Lord of the Flood or Lord of the Deep Waters. The name Ia served as the base of god names from many other cultures, including but not limited to Yah, Iha, Yahweh, Yove, Yehovah, Allah, Janos, Ionos, Uranus, Uranus, and Oans. All these are other names that the entity behind Janos goes by. Even in the picture, I'll highlight it for you, is Izamud. It is Enki's messenger god, two heads. Now, the other name for Janos is Enki or Ie. You only have to look at the name Enki. <laughs> it's there right there in your face. So in this video, I'm gonna just show you so much, all my research and try and cram it into one little short video for you guys. So <laughs> hopefully I can do that. As some of you will know, Janus or Janos is the skeleton key. Here's another name Janos goes by and is connected to none other than Lucifer. So it's intriguing stuff when you really get down to it. Here you have Apollo and Artemis or Artemis other names Janos goes by one that you already know that I've showed you in the, in the video is Baphomet so when you see all these mailing names talking about Baphomet it's Janos here's another one this is CERN how many people talk about CERN and not realize Janos goes by the name of Cerninus they've named it after him Kronos is another one Diana, which you've seen so far in little clips. All these are in full length videos on my channel. Here's another intriguing one. Bel, Baal, Moloch, all Janos, all the entity. Here's another intriguing one that people get blown away. Noah, yes, that Noah. Oans, Dagon, whatever you want to call them. Janos. Here's another one. I am. You saw that. 
in various places who gets called I am and especially I am the door who's the god of doorways I'll leave that with you further back Kush Nimrod all been shown to be other names of Janos and this is another big one some even say Saturn that's why I research Janos because <laughs> it's just huge Shiva is uh, another one so you can just see the pattern and this is just a few guys I don't want to be here all day with it I mean you even have the Demiurge so there you go guys this is just a little na a few names that Janos goes by As Janos is the god of doorways, portals, etc., amongst many, many things, you'd expect him to appear on some ancient doors. Now, this is the Hittite doors, the Hittite civilization. Now, many would have seen it as this, the double-headed eagle. That appears on that door. So, it's important. And as you can see, Janos is known as that double-headed eagle. Also, they mention Jupiter. Another name that you can add to the list. And there you have it guys. The double headed eagle. 33 311s. It's right there. It's Janos. That's how significant Janos is. And as you can see, look at the floor. Oops, duality. Again, more connections. All being hidden, guys. So come on, guys. <laughs> I know you know it. Yep, St. John the Baptist and St. John the Evangelist too. Two, the 11, the doorway, the portal. Remember, Janos's number is 11. This is one of the oldest symbols in masonry. It shows you right there, guys. <laughs> Always makes me go wow when I see this. Everything, and I mean everything, is connected by frequency. And those paths, Petar, have doors, and Janos has the keys. Eleven, as we've just been talking about in that old video, represents the door and the realm we live in. Now let's start at the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1. What do we see? We see the doorway. The El Evan. Even Genesis. Remember, Janos is Genoa. So it really goes this deep. Let's see if I can make sense in this video. Right, let's, let's have a look at some more. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1.1, 1, 1. remember, Janos is a derivative of John, or John is a derivative of Janos. 11 again. In Greek, the word for beginning, origin, or source. Right, I'm not telling you what it is just yet. And later, first principle, or element so it's a significant word that we're going to come up with for all this means first place method of government empire realm authorities and command what is this word it is arch or arch yeah. mm, can you just see how significant this is guys 
If only we knew a God of arches and a God of beginnings who associates with the number 11. Hmm. Oh, Arch and Jamatra adds two. You got it. 11. God of Arches in Jamatra is 101. Again, the doorway, L, Evan, 11. Oh, let's just add Janus to this. Janus, God of Arches. 1, 2, 3, 5, adds 2. You got it. 11. Who? Janus is the Roman God of Beginnings. It's like it's all planned. It's like I've found something. But no, we'll just say it's a coincidence. Here's another verse with beginning and creation. Just look at the number. You have laid the foundation of the earth from the beginning. Remember, beginning is arch. So it's the earth from the arch. And the heavens are the work of your hands. Hebrews 1.10. Another L. Evan. It's not like Janos adds to 11 in Gematri, is it? Oh wait, <laughs> 6 and 5 is, you got it, 11. But people use Gematri all the time. Gematri in Gematri adds to, you got it, 11. That number seems to be getting everywhere because it is the realm of El Evan. Also, the meaning of number 11 is that it's basically the gateway to enlightenment. It's a significant number. The number 11 also represents our intuition, our hidden eye. Some people say it represents the Godhead, the circumpunct, the pineal gland, enlightenment. Look at the pineal gland. It's got 11 letters in it. <laughs> That's a wow. But if you want to say the pineal gland, let's say the pineal gland. In Gematria, it adds to 11. But what joins them all together? Oh, Manly P. Hall says, in occultism, the pineal gland is regarded as a link between the objective and subjective states of consciousness, or in exoteric terminology, the visible and the invisible worlds of nature. In the religions of the Latins, it was therefore referred to as Janos, the two-faced god and keeper of the gates of sanctuary. This divinity was the antitype of Saint Peter, who succeeded him as a warder of the heavenly portals and who carries the two keys of the office. One to the golden mystery of the spirit and the other to the silver mystery of the body. How wow and in, fa in your face is that? And I've been saying that and been showing that for years and no one is talking about it. Number 11 also represents transformation. Now ask yourself, who is the God of change and transitions? Basically transformation. <laughs> the video was about him. Now think about two doors being connected. Now in life, you need to be shown basically that you're on the right path. Patar. How are you shown that? Now this is just a little image I made up to show you life in the clouds, basically, and two doors. Now what number represents a doorway? Yes, 11. So picture two 11s. Now tell me, is this not a number we all see all the time, regular. How many times people say, oh, I see 11, 11, all the time. It's because you've been shown you're on the right path. 11, 11 represents two doorways. So now you know who Janos is and you see a lot of this on YouTube and social media, transvestigation and they always talk about celebrities etc going from male to female, female to male and they'll show you images of Baphomet with breasts and so on yet hardly any of them tell you and talk about Janos, the god of gods who was also in some aspects androgynous both male and female, but he is the god of change and transformation and transitioning. So if you're going from one sex to another, 
and their god is Janos, does that not make more sense, guys, for you who's just starting to look into different things? Now you know why, because Janos is the god of gods. So they're transitioning and showing you that they want to be like Janos. They want to be male to female, female to male, because he's also androgynous. Now that's making you think, isn't it, guys? Talking of celebrities and actors, isn't it just a coincidence that the Screen Actors Guild looks like a certain someone who we're talking about in the video? Hmm, big coincidence that, guys. And even when they go to the Oscars, <laughs> it just makes you laugh, doesn't it? The Oscars are Petar, which is Peter, which is Father, which is Janos. You can't get any more in your face. So this is a snippet from an old video that I recorded a good while ago. Anyway, listen to this guys and I want your, your opinion on it because most of you would have saw it, but it blows me to this day. Blows my mind that is. <laughs> Get your minds out the gutter guys. So according to the accounts of Archelaus Victor, Janos was the mastermind of the age which he lived. He was the founder of a city called Geniculum. It's still in uh, opposite Rome now. It's one of the hills. Now, he taught his people the divisions of the year, which I've showed you already. He's the Calends. The use of shipping and money. He was the first shipbuilder, hence his name being Janos Noah or Noah Janos. So you can see the significance and also the rules of justice. What do we people always say? The maritime law all from the shipbuilder, all from Janos. That's how significant, guys. And the mode of living happily under the authority of the laws, the laws of the walls. He also instructed them how to build temples and to honour the gods with sacrificial worship. Now, here's the bit that even wowed me. He taught humans, us, to surround the cities with walls is that not what i've just showed you in regard to star Fox? could it not be i'm not saying it is but it could be and that is one of the biggest wow factors for me because there is a lot of people in the community looking at star Fox, tartaria etc and the guy and you can see from the writing is accredited with showing humans how to surround their cities with walls is none other than janos Right, so I don't pretend to be an expert in languages, far from it. I've got dyslexia and I find it hard just to read sometimes. So you have to bear with me. What I'm trying to show you sounds right to me, but does that mean it is? Now, why do some past tense verbs end in a T? Sometimes a suffix sounds like T. Nowadays, when we want to add the meaning in the past to a verb, we nearly always just add the suffix. But long ago, with some verbs, the suffix that meant in the past not only sounded like a t it was sometimes spelled with a t and a few other old verbs are still with us now i'm just want to use this in regard to something with spelling and you'll get why in a minute because it just wows me and i know people like that but wow <laughs> anyway in the cathedral this is in genoa there's an inscription that says janos primus rex italiae di progeny Gigantum Q 
Q Fundavit Genuum Tempori Ebrahi. Now, in English, <laughs> that means Janos, the first king of Italy, the progeny of giants who founded Genoa in the days of Abraham. Now, I have a lot of friends and people who listen to the channel who research giants and look into giants and tie it to Tartaria. Guys, another name, and I have to thank someone who watches the channel for this. So anyway, another name Janos goes by is John. You've seen that before. Now, a, a version in Italian or Latin is Gian. So G-I-A-N, Gian. It's another form of Janos, the derivative. Now, if I put something in the past tense to Gian, so I put the T to it, it becomes Giant. I've already showed you that Janos came from Giants. So could the word Giants just be a derivative of Janos saying he was a giant and it's in the past tense because they're not here anymore? I'll leave that up to you, but tell me that's not intriguing and mind-blowing. So, Janos, main names in Rome are Ianos and Janos, I and J. Now, people in the community have been basically theorising and debating for ages on what the I and the J represents. And along comes me <laughs> with my theory of the Great Vowel Shift and Janos. As you can see, a few examples of the I and the J on the screen. Well, I can tell you, it's for Janos, the God. This is what the period is all about. Remember, Janos is the Kalends which calendar comes from. Then you get the statement, well, the letter J is a recent thing. I know. And you'd be right. The letter J was formed in 1524 by the guy seen in the picture. His name is Gian Giorgio Trasino, who was credited with the letter J. What do you notice? Yep. His name is a derivative of Janos. And the formation of the letter was in, yep, you got it, in the Valshift period. It was all done by design. Another thing they did in the Valshift, <laughs> and this just blew me away when you first see it, is that they lost 11 days. 11 days. And this was in 1752. 11 days. It could have been anything else, but no, 11 so if we go back a bit further and you look at the screen this is Numa Pompilus and he's credited with adding January at the beginning he did this in 452 BC yep that's another 11 4 add 5 add 2 equals 11 how many times can we say there's no such thing as a coincidence. It's all done by, de by design. It's all a ritual to Janus when 11 is involved. It is crazy, guys. And this is why I made this video just to show you how in your face it is. The word Corona via us has 11 letters. Nice coincidence, sir, guys. Start of many. In Gematra, it adds to 155, which is, as you can see, 11. Face mask that works as two face. 146 adds to 11. Mutated via us. 173 adds to, you got it, another 11. COVID-19 adds to 11 again. <laughs> now SARS-CoV-2 named on the 11th of Feb. They actually changed its name on the 11th. In Gematra, it adds to, you got it, another 11. Crazy. 
Now, the first official death to this was January the 11th. Now, guys, come on. What is the odds of that? This is a ritual to Janos, so it had to be on the number 11 and in his month. It's just an up, <laughs> it's just mind blowing. And I've been saying this for years, guys. It's all a ritual to Janos. We've had many different variants. Lambda. And as you can see on the screen, it looks like a stylized A, which looks like a stargate. But it's also the 11th letter of the Greek alphabet. And it looks like a stargate. Portals and doorways. Who's the god of portals and doorways? Makes you think, doesn't it? That's all we ever ask. <laughs> it's just to think. It's just another opinion, these videos. But what is a not is that the fact that from the Who, the Lambda variant is one of 11 official Sarkov 2 variants. And it was first detected in Peru and spread to 29 countries. 11 again. People will say, oh, it's just a coincidence. Not at this level. And not with so many. Just mind blowing. The variant called Mu, which is from Lemuria. Add to, you got it, another 11. <laughs> and this was just me showing you that this pandemic was a ritual to Janos from the start. And now people can say, yep, you know what, Paul, you was spot on. Especially when you show them what, what the, track, the, the track and tracing gets tested on. Yeah, it's just a machine called the, the Janos G3. It's just... That's just a major, major, major coincidence, guys, that the machine, they actually test all this stuff on. Like, you know, when they stick it in your nose and your mouth, it's called Janos. Again, just a coincidence. I think not. The Pope is known as the Father. And here we have it. The word Pope derives from the Greek and I can't pronounce that for obvious reasons, meaning father. In the early centuries of Christianity, this title was applied, especially in the East, to all bishops and other senior clergy, and later became reserved in the West to the Bishop of Rome, the Pope, the Pontiff, a reservation made official only in the 11th century. Now guys, you've watched my enough of my stuff to know who the first Pope was, and we know that was Janos and we know Janos's favorite number is 11. Are you telling me they reserved that title only in the 11th century his number as a ritual? I've just blown away because you can see it quite clearly on the screen and Janice's other name is Ionus Pater means Janice father. There we go guys it's even named after him. Like Apep, Janice is known as Chaos. This is St. Peter, Peter, Father Square. And here you go, you have a Chaos symbol and it just fits perfectly into it. Just alluding to the fact it's one and the same. Now, the Vatican has a special holy door. And that door is St. Peter's. Well, you know who St. Peter is now. And as we now know, Peter, Peter is father and the first Pope, Janos. But Janos also has another symbol. It's the IYI. It's a very old symbol used around Europe. And as you can see, you can see it on the holy door. It's, a, it's the crucifixion. But it appears it comes from the holy temple of Janos. It's his doorway and posts. So there you can see just how influential Janos is. Even the IYI is from his temple. And what we'll do is we'll zoom in and you'll see a cockerel on an arch. Who's the god of arches? Now people said the cockerel's associated with St. Peter because he denied God three times. By the time, you know, the cockerel three times. And as you know, the St. Peter, so he's associated with the cockerel. Thus he's holding the keys. But what if they've used it before, they got it from someone else? Janos is pictured here with the key and the cock. You can see they are both one 
in the same and it's just wow it just blows me away when we when you get down to the bones of it and you find out that it's all coming from Janos So, what's in the Vatican courtyard? Oops! A giant pine cone, pineal gland. But, emphasis on the giant pine cone, giant, gian, with the past tense, gian, you know, with the T. It's again named after Janus, the basic saying in the Vatican courtyard is Janus's pineal gland, giant pine cone. Done by two peacocks, again, two the duality it's in your face <laughs> what more can i say right guys i'm going to leave it there i've got like many of you who've watched my videos know i've got so so many videos and content on this i just wanted to keep it short sweet so the new people will see yanos and go wow i didn't know that could then peruse and look at the longer videos so guys please do if you enjoy the topic and enjoy jumping into his story please check out the rest of the Janus collection. You know, you won't regret it. Once you open your eyes to Janos, it all becomes clear. Thank you, stay safe, and please like, share, and subscribe.